Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, taking a look at Alliance's newest toy hauler, newest member of the Valor series, and also their very smallest. This is the new 21 T15. Now, don't let that model number fool you. It's not 21 feet long, but different manufacturers measure in different ways, like maybe floor space or something like that. So what does this one bring you? What I love about this is like Valor is really known for being like one of the biggest, most alpha dog level kind of uh, giant fifth wheel toy haulers. And they took all of that stuff and they just literally like squished it down like honey i shrunk the kids to be all thriller no filler and i cannot believe what they've packed into this thing this little rig uh has dual air conditioners on it like you get on the roof you see two air conditioners stacked right next to one another you're like that's bonkers looking but the way that they've done this is very similar to their fifth wheels where uh you you've got one air conditioner that does nothing but feed the living room and the kitchen area while the other one kind of uh, centralizes into sort of like the living room, bedroom, and bathroom all together to really give you maximum cooling. So you have the most cooling in the biggest room and the smallest rooms don't need as much. Like it just, it's little things like that that they do differently that I really like. This is a wide body uh, product, just like everything else Alliance makes. Um, and it's definitely got a big old flat nose front on it, but uh, you know, that's what allows the shower in the bedroom. And like this has an east west queen bed slide in a travel trailer like this. That concept was um, first pioneered by the Keystone Fusion travel trailer series, uh, but later uh, became very popularized, certainly by the Momentum travel trailer series uh, over by Grand Design. Um, this has a fuel station on board. We've got a nicely sized solar package on here. That's another thing that Alliance does very well. They, uh, they, they're built right from the factory level with more ability to get things more off grid, like more 12 volt, more propane. You know, you got your outside gas grow quick to now come, and you've got a full kitchen complement inside with deceptively good storage. Only thing I want to offer is a quick apology. Uh, this is in a show display space at an event that is long since done by the time you're watching this footage. And where it's parked, I can't get the rear ramp door down, but it does have a ramp patio tailgate. It's got all the party deck stuff that you really want out of a big toy hauler like this. But we're going to spend more of our time looking at it in more like living room mode and checking out all the different like flex functions of this really crafty cool design. So we're starting at the back corner today, looking ourselves forward. We're actually overlooking the door side of the RV, which is one of my favorite parts of this. Not only do you have that rear ramp patio party gate that you can drop down if you want like more sunlight, more fresh air, more views, but even when it's closed up, you still get to overlook your campsite, which I think is really nice. They're using some max airflow windows there. Now, I've always been surprised these things are not more popular in the RV industry. These are these kind of, they're, they're lightweight, they're recliners, little swivel rocking Euro chairs. I always thought they were awesome and they, for the most part, other than toy haulers like this, haven't found a lot of popularity in the industry. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, do you like those? Do you not like those? Like, why do you think those things haven't been more popular? Now, one of the things they're doing uh, a little bit crazy here, I kind of talked about before, is the air conditioning system. So the air conditioner near us direct dumps only here into like the kitchen, living, garage, flex function, patio, dining space, whatever you want to call it. It only does everything. It's like a Swiss Army space. The front air conditioner is centralized though, but that is pushing air like into the bedroom and the bathroom, very similar to like the Alliance, like Valor fifth wheels and whatnot. The idea there being that the biggest room gets a direct air conditioner that doesn't have ducting pumping through the ceiling that is being heated by the sun so that the cold air from the air conditioner is already warmed up to a degree before it even gets into the body cavity of the RV. Uh, meanwhile, the bedroom and the bathroom, they're smaller spaces and with a very limited amount of central ducting should have no problem managing that. Now, a lot of manufacturers won't give you the ability to throw a second air conditioner on an RV of this size or length. And uh, the fact that it's just, that's just how these come. I think that is very, very cool. Now, I think it should go without saying, but every now and then I will still encounter a toy hauler. Uh, in a travel trailer brand every now and then that does floor heating vents. Obviously, uh, Alliance uh, a little more keen than that. Um, there's benefits to floor heating vents. Like I've actually been quite outspoken about those benefits in a lot of my videos. A lot of people uh, really don't like them. And I get that. There's benefits and drawbacks both ways. But I do feel a, in a toy hauler, especially a garage space, you don't want vents in the floor that you're going to be like driving over, dripping over, all kinds of stuff. And they've got all sorts of tie downs in this thing. Also super pet friendly. No carpet in this RV, except for maybe a little carpet square where I, you know, wipe my feet. Um, 
These are a 101 inch wide body, which gives it, you know, big time loading space. And a, and a model like this, the, the trick with a model like this is there's like a million, billion, zillion different things to measure against. Like uh, someone says, well, how much space back there? Well, is that with these benches up or down? Is that with the benches vertical or horizontal? Is that between this cabinet or that cabinet? Like I can't possibly capture every measurement that every person wants to request of me in videos like this. That's why we have local team members. Um, if you've got, uh, you know, a side-by-side -side or a, or a Can-Am or something like that, uh, call our team with the dimensions on your thing and say, okay, can it fit between here and there? And allow our team members to demonstrate their willingness to work for you. We're happy to do that. Now, if you take a look down here, one of the things that you notice is those, uh, again, recliners, they can pivot around. You don't got to leave them right there. You can scoot them. I like to actually drag those out onto the rear patio deck gate system. But this is the coolest thing about toy haulers. And I almost wish they were called like sport utility trailers or something like that. Because they are so much more useful than just hauling toys, you know, as the name implies. You want to use this like a, a, a bunkhouse that can fit adults. This RV can sleep six adult-sized people, which is awesome. Or if you got big kids, like maybe the kids are going to be moving out in a couple years. Maybe this is you getting your second RV the first time. And in the meantime, use, uh, you know, they sleep on one and keep a duffel bag up there with them or something. You can use it for, you know, lounge space. You can use it for dining. There's, there's really the limit here is just, you know, your imagination. What do you think you could do with this space? Now, flipping our way back around here, something that uh, I, I haven't mentioned yet and I really should have pointed out, they're also really good about using the nice blackout roller shades. Um, some people like the valances and lambrequins, the, the boxing around the window treatment. The nice thing about that is it will flat black out the light in here and, you know, you're not going to... It's it's incredible that a ray of light could, could travel all those millions of miles from the sun and still stab me in the eye in the morning somehow. But the fact is, sometimes these chairs or your handlebars might catch those things and rip them off the wall. Some people like them. Some people don't. Uh, it, it's like almond joy. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. <laughs> Um, these are all soft close cabinet drawer, uh, not drawers, doors, by the way. And giving you a look up there, uh, the, the full ceiling out of this, because this is not uh, what I sometimes call a smaller hauler. It's not like one of those Cherokee Gray Wolf little half ton kind of uh, travel trailer toilers. This is a big full size, full width, maximum height, like real deal Evander Holyfield kind of toy hauler right here. And one of the areas that you can see that is just the extreme cargo carrying capacity on this. Um, toy haulers, I think, really should have more carrying capacity than a lot of other RVs. But every now and then, I will still run into one that has a painfully low carrying capacity. Uh, I actually saw a fifth wheel toy hauler not too long ago that had less than 2,000 pounds of cargo space. That's, that's almost a joke. You can't even really load stuff into it. By contrast... Um, you could load bags of concrete mix into this thing and it would probably be fine. Like I said, this front bedroom slide and bathroom across combination uh, originally came from the Keystone uh, Fusion, but Impact series of travel trailers. And uh, it was called a 29V model, but no, absolutely, um, you know, no question. It was hands down the grand design momentum that really popularized this concept. And because this is a true full-size toy hauler, you have that extra tall ceiling. Like, there's no need for a skylight. Uh, because unless you're a power forward for the Chicago Bulls or the team of your choice, you ain't going to have headroom issues in there. You may have noticed how it's all uh, sealed edge thermal foil countertops all the way around or stainless. That toilet also sets up a little bit higher than some others, which I kind of liked and appreciated. Now over here, through the sliding door, we have ourselves our 60 by 80 true queen bedroom. This is not going to be king capable. The slide box is only queen size, so kind of keep that in mind. But what is nice, so you don't feel like you're trapped inside a coffin, they put breeze windows all the way around. Even the headboard window opens for some awesome airflow, and it has those same blackout roller shades you can pull down if you're so inclined. Um, you might have noticed everything in here very well lit, inside that closet and back in the toy hauler bench area it does feel a little dim like it could use just a little nudge of lighting um there's also kind of like a lip on that open area uh above the closet up here 
So if you wanted to put some stuff up here, you could. Now, just to give you a reference point, it's about inch, inch and a half, something like that. The location of the TV hookups in here, I also found a little bit, hmm, like that's a little bit interesting. Um, but the uh, down here, this is kind of cool. So this is our converter. Now, you will see in a second, when the slide here in the bedroom closes, you can still get to that converter. So they did a fine job there. I have no problems with that. Uh, they also use what they call smart wiring, but basically color-coded wiring. Um, and still, not all towable RVs do that today. Now, like the dresser and their big fifth wheels, Alakazam, you see that opens for storage right there. And they gave you, I think, some pretty decent closet space up front. Where this gets a little bit interesting is, yes, the bed lifts up for storage and whatnot, but you it, it doesn't have like a strut. It doesn't have a holdback or anything like that that assists you you have to physically pick up and push and wrestle the mattress. Now, this is not the worst mattress I've ever seen, but it's not amazing. And it was a little bit cumbersome for me. Again, I like to be fair and candid and real. I like to tell you what's good and what's not. They, I, I feel like this could be improved slightly. It's not bad. I've seen other people do it, but it could be done slightly. But if you replace that with a big, thick, heavy mattress, it's going to take two people, without question, to manipulate this. And the just the the kind of nylon buckle strap holdback system on this, maybe it's perfectly fine. I don't know. It felt a little underwhelming to me, but I don't know that it isn't okay. So if there's any owners out there with experience with that, please, please chime in and maybe we can help fill in the blanks here. Now, normally when you have an east-west bed slide, you know, it just slides closed and comes right up next to the dresser. But that can't happen in this case. That bed has to be in that up secured position because you don't have just a small little dresser next to it. You've got yourself that full size bathroom right there. However, that really is the only kind of thing that you have to do for road mode because with no slides in like the kitchen, living, garage, flex function space back here, she's just ready to go. So here's the thing, when we start talking towing, you start hearing a model number like 21 and suddenly the, the half ton towable alarms start going off in people's heads. This is not that. This thing has an 11,000 pound GVW maximum weight. Also, uh, you, you need to keep in mind that like, this thing is wide, it is tall, it's a heavy duty brick. I, I think that you're talking minimum three quarter ton country right here. Now here's another thing that's really crazy on here. This has like, uh, what, like a 3,700 pound or some bonkers number like that cargo carrying capacity. You can, add, I don't know if you could overload this. And it's been my experience that RVs that have higher cargo carrying capacity typically have fewer structural issues because the, the, all, all the joints and fasteners are being stressed to their maximum capacity. Now, if you look over here, you see uh, the aluminum plank kind of anti-slip uh, steps. I think a lot of people sort of expect a lot of stable steps to fold out nowadays. A couple things, those fold out stable steps, not always friendly to uneven uh, campsites, which, you know, toy haulers are often used at. But also consider that this is still, you know, it's your living space, it's your kitchen. It's also still kind of your garage loading space. And you don't always want a big set of steps folding up in there and limiting your uh, potential space there. Now, just like all their big, bad fifth wheels, You've got uh, enclosed underbelly, forced air heated, radiant barrier, uh, holding tank heaters, and all that jazz. You know, it's got it's got all that kind of stuff you expect there. And of course, coming off the side, we got ourselves a propane cooker hooker for your little griddling and uh, chilling sort of situations. Now, as I back up here, a couple quick things. Um, the, one of the things that you can't see, like I can go through and I can list all the features and I can talk about this thing. But what you can't see is the peace of mind factors that you get with an Alliance RV. <clears throat> this is a big, big statement. And there's a lot of brands out here, like, like Rockwood over there. I, I very greatly respect Rockwood. Look how big this Valor looks by comparison to that standard trailer. Holy crap. Um, what I'm getting at, though, is I personally feel, based on experience and um, the, the reports that I see in, like, owners' forums, Alliance steps up and does what's right and takes care of their clients, I will say as well as, if not better than anyone else in the industry, to the tune of like 
Uh, other manufacturers just kind of go, yeah, you know, they, they really, they'll, they'll spend the money to fix things if they need to. Like, it's kind of become a thing even known in the industry. So many people ask me, you know, why don't travel trailers have generators? Well, a lot of them don't have space for it. And this one, they, 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 they hit it under the shower in a really crafty position right there. So that 4,000 generator uh, should be able to run pretty much everything in the RV. Normally that uh, typically wouldn't be enough to run two air conditioners, but uh, they tend to use like, so there's a difference between power saver and soft start air conditioning that not everybody's aware of. And basically you don't need to worry about it because they're essentially using both. So if you really want to get maximum airflow uh, on this thing, no matter where you're parking, that should be something that this is capable. Now, this design with that sort of bedroom, bathroom stacked in the front thing, um, it, it, it does, you know, it's got some cool benefits. It, it significantly shortens the length of this RV. Like if you had a bathroom and then a full bedroom with a walk around bed in front of it, man, it would, it would probably, I bet, add eight foot to this sucker, something like that. That's why so many toy haulers are so darn big. It does mean this design has very limited outside cargo space, but I love how just like their fifth wheels, they still gave us that privatized docking center right there. This does have a single hookup for the stinky slinky, the stick stink pickle, uh, you know, uh, exhaust port down there, as it were. Working our way back, you see that this does have that onboard fueling station. Now, unlike their big fifth wheels, just for lack of space, this does not have dual 30 gallon tanks. You do have one onboard tank that will feed both the generator and the fueling station. So if you try going nuts, putting some kind of high octane fuel or something in that, you know, your, your generator ain't gonna like you. Now, again, unfortunately we are back uh, right against this wall right here. And I really wish I could have the ramp patio down. I, I, I think at this point though, folks have seen enough of those to kind of understand it. But I did actually wanna take this as an opportunity just so that you could see like the kind of hardware that they have back here. This was actually one thing that surprised me a little bit. I was actually surprised it didn't have those like positive locking cam latches as opposed to just like the little flip over bar style that you're looking at right there. Um, that's, that's like one of the very few things I'm like, huh, I'm surprised it didn't go whole hog on that. But like a lot of other manufacturers, like they, uh, they don't have a side mount ladder, but they are actually including the telescopic ladder right there. A lot of manufacturers will say, oh no, we're ladder prepped, but they don't actually give you the ladder. It's those extra little attention to detail things that I really appreciate. And once again, you can use that ladder to get up there onto the roof and take a look. And doesn't it look funny? You see those two big Coleman air conditioners stacked almost like right on top of one another. That's because they're going for maximum cooling capacity within the physical space that they had available while still giving us a uh, pretty respectable solar package up there, I think. So like I said, this is definitely very much in the heart of uh, some things that the Grand Design uh, Momentum does in terms of the layout. Now they're each accomplishing that layout a little bit differently. East to West Alta has also recently come out with a floor plan very, very similar to this. So if you like what you see here and you'd like to you know, check for pricing and availability, I'll leave you a link for that, certainly. Uh, but if you're like, I wonder what else is out there before I go spending the money? We've got all kinds of different options for you with Bish's RV. So if you appreciate how we've shown you the good with the bad, with everything in between, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new with us here. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy trails, everyone.